In the previous session, we discussed about what is the requirement and what are the different steps we tried to meet the requirement and this is the final architecture we came up and also we discussed about the impact of this particular architecture. Right? So if you haven't seen um, the previous session, I have shared the link in the comment section. Um, you can go through it to understand the requirement. In this session, I will cover like what we did as part of the on as part of onboarding all these microservices to AWS and how we improve the performance of this particular microservice. So at some at some point we started migrating all the microservices to AWS and we thought to change the existing uh, architecture of this content management system okay to make by using some of the services provided by AWS so we can improve the performance of this UI. So that is our intention. Okay. So what we did, we um, redesigned the entire system, entire content management system by using all these services. So we have a API gateway in AWS. So API gateway is nothing but where we can configure um, the request and uh, the response and who is going to implement the request. All those stuff we can configure in API gateway. So once a request comes in, we need to say for this request, uh, what I need to do, right? So in, in this content management system, what we did, we wrote a Lambda function. And the function, it's a simple function. Like it just, you know, for a given key, you just go and uh, get a value from the database and return the response back to the client, okay? Once a request hit this API gateway, uh, that will trigger the Lambda. So Lambda will send the request to key to the database and get a response back and send it back to the API gateway which will send back to um, the client. Okay. So it's a simple design. Okay. Initially we went with RDS. Actually we, we have been using our own legacy database initially but um, there was too much of latency and uh, we to avoid that um, we started using the Redis uh, cache provided by the AWS uh, which which actually give us a very good performance but uh, the Redis is actually a bit expensive and it, it has many purpose and for us it's a very simple requirement we just need to store a key value pair in a cache and um, we have to maintain that key value pair uh, we replace the Redis with a mem cache uh, so mem cache is a cheap uh, cache provided by AWS and it's easy to you know, load the data or update the data in the memcache. So the Lambda started using the memcache to retrieve the value and um, we had a very good performance uh, here. Okay. So once um, the business is satisfied with the performance and once we found the system is stabilized and once we found the UA microservice is actually very good in terms of let, uh, latency or and there is no impact for a UI microservice because of this particular architecture. Okay, um, the other uh, services also started using the same microservices, microservice uh, for the content management. Okay, now apart from our UI microservice, a uh, few other microservices in our um, application started using this content management system. Okay. So at some point the business start we need to come up with some analytical framework okay to see how many microservices how many other services actually using this particular content management system and to track okay which message is highly used okay so they want us to come up with a kind of an analytic framework so for that um, we started using some of the services in aws so we have a queue system in uh, sqs which is a queuing system in uh, AWS okay so this this is a queuing this this can hold any number of messages right so once the request comes to lambda lambda send you know uh, the data data like what is who is the client and what is the key he is looking for right and what is the request and response time so all those things it sent to the queue uh, SQS in the JSON format and we have a lambda which actually keep listening uh, keep polling to this sqs and if there is any data it start processing and store that in s3 
we used S3 instead of DynamoDB or any other DB because we just want to store the data in some chip, uh, make a, uh, chip uh, so that we used S3. It is very easy to collect the data from S3. Okay. And uh, if there is any messages which are not processed by Lambda, it will be going to the uh, DLQ, which is kind of dead letter queue. Okay, the failed messages will be going there. And I, we have another uh, uh, Lambda function which will be running once in a day, which keep looking for any messages here in dead letter queue. And we, we try to reprocess the data and save that in S3. It will be sending email to the team to make sure like there are to send a notification saying that there are some messages still in DLQ and uh, so that the production support team will go and see and uh, fix it manually so this is a kind of architecture we came up uh, for if you feel if you guys feel like there's something which we can correct on this uh, architecture please add your comments okay um, and uh, on top of this, we do have a uh, authentication framework here, which I can discuss in a uh, separate session how the authentication works in AWS world. This session, thank you. Bye.